Okay, I have some big news, and it's a little bit of an exclusive, which is kind of cool. But I have some really cool news about Chester Thompson. Now, who's Chester Thompson? Don't ask that question. That's stupid. Everybody knows. Chester played with Phil for so many years, and he played with Genesis for more years. And over the past little while, he's been doing some of his own solo stuff, and he's been doing teaching. And of course, we know that he just joined Unitopia for a tour that's coming up real soon. And so many people are stoked about that. I mean, it's just great to have all of these guys still making music and still playing music. Everyone from Mike and the Mechanics to Peter right now, and of course, Chester. Now, I've connected with his label. So Unitopia is on this label called progrock.com essentials. Progrock.com is the home to everything prog. And if you are a fan of Genesis, you probably are familiar with it. You've probably been involved in learning something about Prague or being part of that community at some point. ProgRock.com Essentials is the record label side of things. And they're the ones who are releasing the Unitopia record, which is coming out real soon. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about something even cooler and more specific to Chester Thompson and to fans of Phil. And that is a new Chester Thompson solo record is coming out on September 1st. Let's talk about it. This is a brand new studio album from Chester. It's completely instrumental. I'm going to give you as many details as I can right now about this new record. And we'll we'll talk we'll go track by track and we'll we'll talk about the whole album in a special dedicated review closer to when that comes out. So let me share with you what I know. So we know it's coming out on progrock.com essentials, an incredible progressive rock record label. We know it's coming out on September 1st, which is a Friday. We know the album is called, ready for it? Wake up call. Now, to all my Phil fans out there, I don't think there's any connection to Phil's song, Wake Up Call. In fact, I'm going to play you a clip of Wake Up Call in just a couple minutes with the label's permission, but it's not its not the Wake Up Call that opens up Phil's album, Testify, completely different song, unrelated. We know that the record is coming out on CD and digital and available on streaming platforms, and I'm pretty sure it's coming out on vinyl. I'm actually 99% sure it's coming out on vinyl, which is so exciting. And so we're going to wait to do a review for when I get it uh, on the turntable. I've heard the wave file. So in this, this record, what I can tell you right now is this record is like pristine sounding. Like it is, it is produced so well. I mean, I know that uh, Chester lives in Nashville, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was recorded in Nashville with some session players, but it, it sounds fantastic. This is not a DIY recording. And so I can't wait to drop the needle on vinyl and listen to that. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure it's going to come out on color vinyl too, because when I was talking to Mark at Prog Rock, I, I think they're pretty into that. So I don't have any details yet about the vinyl, but I'll get that to you as soon as I find out. You want to see the album cover? Let me show you the album cover. It's really cool. So here's a cover of the artwork. It's called Wake Up Call. There's nine songs on the album. So let's talk about the music for a little bit. It, it's it, There's a lot of different terms we could give it. Uh, is it progressive rock? Well, uh, I'd say no. I would say certainly like the songs are kind of shorter in nature, like three or four minutes. Um, I would say it's more jazz. It's more jazz. It's all instrumental. You know what it reminds me a lot of, actually, in a, is uh, Daryl Sturmer did a record called Another Side of Genesis many, many years ago that was more of kind of like Latin-inspired um, nylon string guitar interpretations of Genesis music. So these are all original songs. These are not interpretations of anybody's songs. But I think just stylistically, it's the same. It's just the same style is that from a genre standpoint. What I think is really interesting, I might just be projecting this on the record, and I'll talk about this when we do a full review of the album, but I feel like you would expect from a drummer who's releasing a solo record for it to be all drums. That would be kind of cool, right? If it was just all percussion. Well, this has like piano and saxophone, electric guitar and bass, tons of instruments, incredible synths too. I'm going to show you a clip of some really cool synth stuff on the opening track, Wake Up Call. You would imagine a drummer would be like all percussion, right? Some drums, maybe some hand percussion, some congas. But I feel like what we know about Chester is he's not a front man. He's always taken a back seat, both figuratively and literally on stage. And you hear it in this music. The drums are not necessarily mixed to the forefront. There's incredible balance between all the musicians and you find yourself listening to the keyboard solo or the synths or to the bass lines at the same time as listening to the incredible Chester grooves on the record. So it's not full of drum solos. It's about grooves. Phil was the same way. Phil was about locking into a really cool groove. It sounds simple. And that's one thing a lot of non-drummers will listen to this and go, 
man, some of these grooves are just pretty simple. Well, they're not. They're very, very difficult. And seasoned drummers will listen to some of these grooves and go, oh my gosh, these are super tricky to play. That's how you know it's a drummer's record. Like there's some really cool stuff going on from the drums. But at the same time, it's overall balance. It, it, it creates a really great listening experience. If you have people over for dinner, you're going to drop this on the turntable and it's going to make for a great night. It's not going to be like, whoa, why is that drummer doing a six minute drum solo? I think that speaks to Chester's like overall humility is it's just just like really well-balanced record. Now there's so many more details about this record that we'll dive into, but let's take a listen. The first track I wanna play you, I'm just gonna play you a snippet. Even though the label said I could do a little preview, I just didn't wanna get in too much trouble down the line with YouTube because sometimes they hear a song and even if the label's approved it, they'll try to give me a copyright strike. It's all bad news. So I'm gonna play just a little clip and cross my fingers that everything goes okay. The first track I wanna show you is a song called Smack 'Em. And I think it's probably the best drum song on this record because there are some fills, but you also get to hear just the great groove. So let me play you a couple seconds of the song Smack 'em. I know a lot of you out there, especially you Genesis fans, Phil Collins fans who buy vinyl, a lot of you guys are audiophiles. Prog fans are a lot of audiophiles out there. I know this record was done with incredible high resolution. And I just think I'm listening here. I'm in the studio. I just played that clip uh, and I've got studio monitors and just like the beautiful panning of like what's going on there with the electric, with the electric guitars. This is a like a really pristine record. It's a beautiful record. I think that's what I was so impressed by is just when you think of a solo record from a certain instrumentalist, you just think of nonstop soloing, right? Or you think of completely raw, naked drums. But the problem with that is that I don't know if there are great examples of like drum records with no melodic content at all. I just don't see how that's like listenable in a in the long term. Like, I think you could listen to it and it's cool. Put some headphones on, maybe one pass, it's, it's listenable. But if you put that on at a dinner party or in a cafe, it's going to be kind of distracting. And I just think from a melodic standpoint, you need melody, right? You need something to kind of like anchor you into the song to know where you are in the song. Even if the groove is the primary source of excitement. And the same thing with dance music. It's that backbeat. It's those hi-hats and the tambo. Dance music is all about the beat. At the same time, all dance music has some sort of hook or melody happening in the background. And so as much as I would love to hear one day a, a record from Chester that is completely just drums, I think this is a better listening experience. And you just heard it. I mean, you heard some great drum playing, but it's also just a beautifully well-played record by all the musicians. Okay, remember I was talking about synths? There's some really cool synth stuff on the opening track, the title track, Wake Up Call. So let me play you a little clip of the song, Wake Up Call. There's little hints of but seriously in there too, right? There's little hints of no jacket required in there a little bit. There's little hints of a hot night in Paris in there. So I think our Phil Collins fans are really going to love this record. I'm going to give you some details. I've got some more things to tell you in a sec. Hold on a second. I love that it was kind of like there is some sort of like interesting synth part that's happening. It sounds a little bit lo-fi, sounds a little bit like an alarm clock playing a melody. There's some great synth playing on this song. Um, you'll hear it when you hear it. Sounds kind of like Moog, like a lot of like pitch bending stuff. Really, really cool. You know what this record really sounds like? A band called Weather Report. I wonder if Chester's ever heard of them. Okay, so let's talk about how you can get your hands on a copy of this record. So I'm going to drop a link in the description below for a pre-order link, and you can pre-order a copy from progrock.com essentials on their website. Like I said, this is coming out on September 1st, but three more things I want to tell you that's kind of important. Number one is, wouldn't it be fun to chat with Chester about this record and about some of the times he spent with Phil and Genesis? That'd be fun. Hopefully that can happen. 
hopefully. Number two is, like I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to be launching a Patreon pretty soon. We're weeks, if not days away from me putting that together. So keep an eye out for that. And I'm going to talk to progrock.com essentials and see if they'll allow me to give some digital versions of these new songs to our Patreon. So keep an eye out for that. And I hope you'll consider supporting the channel. And number three, if you want to win a copy of this record, we're going to do a giveaway. Just go to everythingphilcollins.com, everythingphilcollins.com. And on the homepage there, I'll have a sign-up form where you can enter your email for a chance to win a free copy of this record delivered to you. I don't know when we'll run the contest, sometime when the album comes out, but go to everythingphilcollins.com to enter your email. And finally, make sure you go to progrock.com. Stay up to date with what they're doing because they have a ton of releases and they have some tours happening this fall including the Unitopia tour and the new record from Unitopia, which I've also heard, it's fantastic. I'll tell you, this new album from Chester is sentimental and it's brand new. You know what I mean? I'm honored to be able to have been listening to it uh, for the past couple of weeks. It's beautiful. I think instrumental music, especially for my generation and certainly younger generations, it's hard for us to kind of sink our teeth into instrumental music uh, initially. Uh, our, our disposition is to look for melody. I, I grew up in music from the 80s and 90s and the 2000s, and it was all about what the person was saying. I don't remember any instrumental music that made a significant impact outside of Genesis stuff, for sure, and Phil. But as I'm older and more mature, and as I'm now approaching my late 20s, <laughs> I have a greater appreciation for instrumental music. In fact, I would say about 50% of the music I listen to is instrumental music. I would say maybe 75% of the non-Genesis Phil Collins music I listen to is instrumental. I like neoclassical. I like jazz. I like new jazz. I like tropical. I like electronic. I love this, which is like all those things put together. I think younger people are starting to get an appreciation for instrumental music. When you listen to this, it's easy just to think, okay, this is just jazz. But when you stop and think, hold on a second, somebody had to play each one of those instruments and not just anybody, somebody professional. So I think the rise of young people making music on their laptops in their bedrooms has actually given a greater appreciation to really professional musicians like Chester who are doing things that bedroom musicians just cannot achieve. So I found myself listening to this record with just like the utmost respect and appreciation for talented musicians and really great recordings. Let me know what you think about this news in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the songs. Make sure you pre-order the record. Go to progrock.com essentials to pre-order the record and go to everythingphilcollins.com to enter your email for a chance to win this great record. Thanks for watching. Congrats, Chester. 